In this video, we're going to discuss about a question which is finding the peak element of an given array. This question is taken from the Geeks for Geeks website and the link of the question is given in the description box below. So let's get started. Now, firstly, let's understand what do you mean by a peak element? If you could look at this particular array, we call an element a peak element when that particular element is bigger than the left element and right element. It's when it's bigger than its left element and right element, it is called as a peak element. Now, if we could look in our case, here 12 is the peak element because 4, 12 and 5. If you can look at 12, 12 is bigger than 4 and 12 is also bigger than 5. Till here, I think it is perfect. And even 7 is also a peak element because 7 is greater than 5 and it is also greater than 3. Now you might get one more question which is can the first element and the last element be peak elements? Can they become peak elements? And the answer to this question is yes, they can become peak elements. What is the condition for them to become peak elements? Is you have to compare the first element with its right rightmost element. Now is 5 greater than 7? No. So this particular thing is not a peak element. And here you have to compare the last element with the leftmost element. If here is 6 greater than 5, yes 6 is greater than 5. So this is also a peak element. Now I hope till here you understood the problem statement. We have two approaches to solve this problem. The first one is the naive approach, which is big O of n approach. And the second, we have the efficient approach, which runs at big O of log n. So this runs at big O of log n and this runs at big O of n. Now, firstly, we will understand the naive approach. So here we have the particular code of the approach whose time complexity is big O of n. So in this, what we are doing is, for example, we'll take another array, which is, is the first step is if the value of n is equal to one, then we're going to return zero. See, if the size of the array is a single element, then we are supposed to return that particular element itself. So that is the first case. And the second case, if the element at zero eighth index is greater than the first in, uh, element at first index, then we are supposed to return zero. So here if you have 15 and here if you have 10, so if 15 is greater than 10, then we are supposed to return the value 15, which is the element at 0th index. Now another case, if element at n minus 1, n minus 1 is the last element. For example, you have an array, let's consider the pre this array itself, okay. So if element at the last index, if that particular thing is greater than this element at the second last index. So if you look at this particular case, if 50 is greater than 100, then we are supposed to print 50. That is what it means. So basically what we are doing is we are checking for the first and the last elements. That's it. We, we are only bothering about the first and the last element. And we also bothered about the case where there is only one element present in that array. So till here, I hope it's clear. Now, the next thing is we, we wrote about like, like we cared about the first and the last elements. Now it's time to care about all the remaining elements. So for that, what we are doing is for, for int i equals one. So here we are starting the loop from the first element because we cared about the last element. I mean, we cared about the zero uh, index element. So we are starting from one and we are going till n minus one. We are not going till n because we also cared about the last element. Okay. So what we are going to do here is now observe this case. If ARR of I is greater than ARR of I minus one. So let us say, okay, let us take the case of five seven and 10. Okay. 
Here, if ARR of I is greater than ARR of I minus 1, let's say the I is pointing here. Let's say the value of I is 2. Let's say I is pointing at 2. If ARR of I is greater than ARR of I minus 1, which means if 7 is greater than 5 or I mean and if ARR of I is greater than ARR of I plus 1 and if 7 is greater than 10, then we are supposed to return 7. If these both cases satisfy because we kept an AND operator over here. So if these both cases satisfy, we are supposed to return 7. But here it is not satisfying the second case. So we are not going to return 7. Now we will look at another case where it is satisfying. Now let's look at this particular piece 10, 15 and 2. So suppose it is the i is pointing at 15. Then what we are going to do? If ARR of i is greater than or equal to ARR of i minus 1. So we are going to check is 15 greater than 10. And if ARR of i is greater than or equal to ARR of i plus 1, we are going to check is 15 greater than 2. So here it is satisfying both the cases. So what we are going to do is we are going to return 15. So we are going to return this value. Then what we are going to do, we are going to increase the i value. We are going to check and we are going to return the values in this way okay but we are not going to use this approach because the time complexity of this approach is big o of n so in this second approach what i am going to do is i am going to use the binary approach in which i am going to take the low and the high so the low will be pointing to the 0th index and the high will be pointing to the last index of the array, which is n minus 1. Now, we are going to write condition while low is less than or equal to high. Then, we are going to take another mid element. Don't worry, I will explain this again. So, here mid is going to be equal to low plus high divided by 2. I think till here it is clear. Now, what I am going to do here is, I am going to write a if statement and after I write this if statement, I am going to explain this clearly. If mid equals 0 or array element at mid position is greater than the element at mid plus 1, if mid double equals n minus 1 or array at mid position is greater than or equal to element at mid minus 1 then we are supposed to return the mid now I know this is very confusing I will explain you this consider this particular array and these are the indices of this array so what we are doing here is we are referring to the first index as low and we are referring to the last index as high and we are referring to the mid index as high plus low, low plus high divided by 2, which is 0 plus 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So, this particular thing is the mid index. So, here what is the condition is if mid is equal to 0, here 0 in the sense if mid is equal to the 0th element or mid ARR of mid. So, here mid is 2 is greater than ARR of 3. So, what this means is, if is 16 greater than 15 and what we are saying is mid double equals n minus 1. So, mid double equals n minus 1 means if mid is referring to the last element or is this particular element 16 which is ARR of mid see if you could see here ARR of mid is greater than equal uh, greater than equal to ARR of mid minus 1 so mid minus 1 means is 16 greater than 8 so how this is working let's understand let's only look for this 8 16 and 15 let's look for only this thing okay now what is happening is first we are checking is the mid element now this is the mid element. So is the mid element equal to the 0th index? 
no it is not equal to the zeroth index so you move to the or statement so in the or what is written the element at the mid is greater than element at mid plus 1 so here element at mid is 16 so 16 is greater than 15 okay so here one case is satisfied now we are supposed to check the other side which is the other side of the and so here what is written is mid equal to n minus 1 so is the mid equal to this particular element no it is not equal so we'll go to the or case so it is asking arr of mid so is 16 greater than or equal to arr of mid minus 1 mid minus 1 means this element so is 16 greater than or equal to 8 it is greater than 8 Sixteen is greater than eight, so this case is also satisfied. Now, here both the cases got satisfied. So what we are doing, we are going to return mid, which is we are going to return the value sixteen. Till here it is fine. Now there are there uh, there is a possibility that you have you can have many more peak numbers. Okay, apart from sixteen, if you have a big array, you can have many peak numbers so this code till until here is fine but how do you move to the next numbers how can you move the pointers in which way are you supposed to move the pointers that thing we will look at else put an else if over here else if arr of mid is less than or equal to arr of mid plus 1 then we need to increase the low by mid plus 1 first i'll type the code and then i'll explain clearly don't worry else we need to increase the high by mid minus 1 so why what i did and why i did that i'll explain you now so until here what you did is you gave you set the low and the high pointers and you also set the mid pointer and what you did was you try to find whether this particular mid is a peak value or not so here you could see clearly that this is not a peak value now in the else part what we are going to do is we are going to understand how we are moving this pointer and how we are going to find the other values so what we are going to do here is if array at mid so that is if the value 2 is it less than or equal to the value at mid plus 1 so this is mid plus 1 okay so here 4 is greater the value at mid plus 1 is greater than the value at mid so this condition got satisfied so if this condition gets satisfied what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to do uh, we are supposed to move this particular low to mid plus 1 so what we'll do is we are going to remove the low from here and we are going to move the low here now we will be considering this new array which is 4 18 9 and 6 so here this is low and this is high so the mid element is going to be this this is going to be the mid element so what we are going to do here is we are going to again check we are going to again get into this particular loop first thing we are going to check is mid equal to the zeroth element no it's not equal to zero at element and is mid is the element at mid greater than the element at mid minus 1 uh, mid plus 1 so that is is 18 greater than 9 yes so here it is an or statements because uh, it's an or statement so if any one of the condition get satisfied we are going to check the another statement so here we gave an and and statement means the both the conditions have to be true or means any of the condition can be true so here one condition is true and we are going to check this conditions here is the mid element equal to n minus 1 it is not equal to n minus 1 it's not equal to the last element so we are going to check the other condition is the element at mid so is the element at mid greater than or equal to element at mid minus 1 so if this is mid then this is mid minus 1 is 18 greater than or equal to 4 yes it is greater than or equal to 4 so here both the conditions got satisfied so what we are supposed to do we are supposed to return the mid so we are supposed to return 18 over here if in case 
the the bigger element is present at the left side so if this particular condition is not satisfied let's say the element at mid so just look at this case okay just assume let's say that the element at this position is not great this part the element is at mid position is not greater than the element at mid plus one let us say that that happens so what we are going to do then we are going to move this high pointer here and we are going to consider the left array so he, at present we consider this part so if this was not true then we would have considered this part and we would have searched which is the particular element so what we are doing here is basically the concept is here is whichever element is the bigger so here we have mid here we have mid minus one here we have mid plus one if mid plus one is bigger we are moving to this side if mid minus one is bigger we are moving to this side so why are we doing this is if you, if you move to the element which is bigger then there is more probability that you will find the peak value see there uh, you can't deny the fact that even in this mid if you move at the least element also if you move at the direction of the least element also you may find a peak value but there are more chances to find the peak value when you move with a greater element if for example here if you could see this element is greater so if you move in this direction there is a very great chance that this element can be the peak element or there is a possibility of the peak element to be present in this direction here this is a peak element but if you move in the direction of the greater element then there is high chance that that might be the peak element or in that direction you might have the peak element so considering that fact we are moving in the direction where the element is greater so that is the logic behind this code so here we are at our code editor so here i have given the return minus one like if the whole code doesn't work then we are supposed to return the minus one now let's compile this and submit this see if you could see it got submitted and the answer is correct thank you so much for watching this video please do like share and subscribe to my channel we'll meet in the next one